Hey everyone, Todd from Sideshow Effects once again, and in this video I'm going to detail all the different functions and features of our Reaper MIDI control for Stream Deck package. Now I assume that you've gone through the PDF that was included in the download and followed the instructions on the installation there, or you've watched our installation video, and uh, if you have not, I have the link uh, in the description below. But once you're set up, this is the main page that you're presented with. Now I'm going to be uh, demonstrating this on an Excel device. Most of the functions are available on the 15 key, so you can follow along with, with no problem here. Additionally, I'll be demonstrating this on a Mac system, but all the features and functions are identical on the Windows profile. So to start off with, we're going to just focus on uh, this uh, layer of, of buttons. And these are the track selection buttons. So as the name suggests, you would click on one of these buttons and that selects the track in the application. So for example, we can click on our bass clean, take that off, click on guitar, and you see it, it updates with Reaper itself. So you see, when you don't have a track selected, this is our track selector volume fader it isn't being utilized. So you have to select a track in order for this to be uh, active. So if we go to our base clean or base grit that we have there, you can now see the volume fader has jumped up to its position reflective in the application. And this is also live for us, and so now we can use these buttons as a volume fader button for this selected track. So you can see by moving the track, the, the fader up and down, it reflects in our application. Now beside this, of course, is our master controller. And we can bring our master up, just like that. Now if you find that these fader controls are moving too quickly or too slowly, you can adjust these. And I'll quickly show you how to do that. You hop over to at the Stream Deck, you can click on any one of the buttons, and in this area here, this is where the programming is happening for, for this key. Uh, you'll see that there is a fader speed uh, dialog here, and we can adjust this fader speed. So if I move this down to slow, and go over to the Stream Deck, when I press that key, the response is going to be a lot slower than it was. So we'll move that back up to fast, We'll go really fast this time. And what I'll need to do is whatever I do on this side of the, uh, of the fader control, we need to do the same thing on the top side. So if I click on this and make this, and make this really fast, now I'm gonna go to Stream Deck and I press the top, you see it moves very, very quickly. So let's set that back to a bit more of a normal level. Back into Reaper. And you'll see we're now back to where we were. So that is something you can suit to your own taste. So back onto our, our stream deck here for our selected track, we also have the ability to uh, invoke read, write, mute, and solo for any tracks that are selected. Currently we have the base grit selected, so we can select read, write, mute, solo, and you can see they're reflected in the Reaper application. Now still staying with the selected track area, we have these keys up here, uh, track back, track forward, and track slide back, track slide forward. Now what they will do is, obviously we only have eight keys that are available to us on this page. And my song currently has 14 tracks. So how do I access tracks 9 through 14? As you can see, we have tracks 1 to 8, from drums all the way to shaker, are represented here. So to access tracks 9 through 14, we will go to the next bank of tracks. So we use the track slide function. Hitting track slide. So now you see things have slid down 
to the next bank of eight tracks, starting at track number nine, which is our strings. The regular track functions will just take us one at a time back or forward through the track. So pressing track here, we're now moving one at a time all the way back until we get to our first track, which is our drums. So that's how we can quickly move through all the different tracks that we've got in our project. You can have 30, 40 tracks and keep banking through to reach them. So of course along the bottom we have our normal transport controls. We can take ourselves to the beginning of the song, the end of the song. We can invoke loop, stop, play, and record. These keys here will add an audio track to our current song or an instrument track. Now up along the top here as well we have our time bar display. We have metronome control. And this is our console page that will open up new pages for us. So clicking this, we go into our console view. And this gives us volume fader controls for all of the individual tracks. And you can see they're labeled along the bottom here. So instead of just having to select each one, we now have the control of the first eight tracks on this page. And we can move them as we see fit. And you can see it's reflecting in the interface itself. We also have the solo for each one of these tracks available here, along with a couple transport buttons and our bank buttons here to take us to the next bank of eight tracks. Now this button will take us to another page, which is our mute, solo, and arm page. Once again the transport controls going from our track to track, bank to bank, and mute, solo, and arm for each of the tracks listed. And go back. The next one over is our pan control page. Clicking on this, we have pan pots available to us. Once again, with the first eight tracks, you want to get to the next bank of eight tracks, and you have the next bank of eight tracks. So, still on the base, we can see that we can control the pan pot. Now you notice there's a flip function here. What this does, when I press flip, it now changes the pot's control to not being pan anymore. It now changes it to being a volume fader control. So you can see now I'm moving the volume fader with my pan pot. This just it might be a little easier uh, rather than jumping back and forth between the two different pages, that you can quickly just hit the flip button, make a quick adjustment, take that off, and you're, you're back to using your pan. That same function is also available in our fader control page that we were just in. Here's the flip button here, and now this fader control is going to control the pan. So we'll take that off and now it's back to controlling the volume fader. Now one additional troubleshooting note you might encounter is that occasionally you might find that the stream deck uh, stops being responsive. Uh, the MIDI controls aren't working anymore and you get error messages like this or even the graphics don't show up where you'll see a, uh, a MIDI symbol uh, showing that the graphics are offline. Now this is a known problem with how stream deck uses MIDI and it hasn't been fixed yet, but there is uh, a, a very simple workaround to avoid this happening and that is you should always try and have your Stream Deck directly connected to your computer. So don't use a USB hub, go straight from the Stream Deck into the computer and that tends to make a much more stable MIDI connection. So if you have to go through a USB hub, you probably are going to find that this will occasionally go offline on you. So the fix to get everything back online is very simple. You just go back to uh, Stream Deck software, go back into the store, and uh, into plugins, search for the MIDI again, click uninstall, wait for it to do the uninstall process, and then immediately install it again. Now you may find you'll have to restart Stream Deck. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So when you go back to your application, you'll find that things will work as they did before. And you have 
their functionality back. So that's a quick fix on that. But once again, the best approach is to make a direct connection from the Stream Deck to the computer and avoid using a USB hub for its connection. So that's it. That's all you need to know. I hope it really helps in your workflow and, and uh, makes your life in the studio a lot easier. Thanks once again. We'll talk to you soon.